Welcome to a talk today about why enlightenment is here and now. So enjoy. So I'm out today. Uh, you can see the bluebells there. So it's May time in the UK. And we've had some really lovely weather recently. And I've been working on farms quite a lot in the spring. And while I've been journeying, to these farms I've been listening to to talks and in particular listening to Ajahn Sumedho who's one of the monks that I spent a little time with when I was a, a, a novice monk many years ago and in this talk he's just saying about enlightenment saying that we have this perception that enlightenment is somewhere outside of ourselves it's when I sit in meditation for 10 hours or when I do this then I will achieve enlightenment and what basically he's saying and it's kind of my own experience is that enlightenment is here and now it's like we don't have to go anywhere we don't have to achieve anything and this really is kind of comes back to happiness certainly the eastern way of happiness the eastern definition is more of an internal looking you know you look within for happiness whereas in the west we generally externalize it we look for happiness outside of ourselves so Ajahn Brahm who's a contemporary of Ajahn Sumedho who spent time with Ajahn Chah in the, in the 60s and 70s it said it's very similar that enlightenment is happiness upon happiness upon happiness upon happiness so we find those things which bring true happiness, not this external happiness, but real deep sense of happiness through compassion, through love, through meditation, through kindness, through cultivating these qualities. And in Buddhism they call some of those the Brahma Viharas. So you've got uh, Metta, loving kindness, Mudita, sympathetic joy, Upeka, uh, equanimity, and you've also got Karuna, compassion. And it's these building, ah, building upon these. And realizing that you don't have to go anywhere. If you choose to be happy, you can choose that now. You can choose to realize that enlightenment is a potential in your lifetime. It's a potential in this moment. It's not about going anywhere. And when I was probably it was 2002, 2003, I'd been in the monastery a year or so, and I really struggled. I'd got to the point where I couldn't go on. I wanted to kill myself, but I had nowhere to go. And, and I knew within my Buddhist reflections and my studies that if I killed myself, then that would be the worst thing ever from a point of reincarnation. So I felt really stuck, so I felt I couldn't go forward, I couldn't go backwards, and I couldn't stand still because it was so painful. And it was at that point, I remember one evening being in this space and suddenly everything dropped away. It was like I woke up, it was like a, an instance of enlightenment, just feeling that. Going, oh my God, it was too painful to look at the future. It was too painful to look at my past, and it was too painful to be here and now kind of and therefore I had to find some other aspect of myself and it was like oh, wow and it probably lasted five minutes and then it drifted away and yet yeah it, it, realizing that we think we have to get somewhere we when we have meditated we've we've practiced for long enough then we can achieve enlightenment but as I saw it's like oh, we can get glimpses from time to time. So, yeah, um, just a simple reflection, um, you know, about my pers perspective on enlightenment. But the only person who can really talk about enlightenment is someone who is enlightened, and I'm not enlightened. So, <laughs> um, many blessings from this beautiful um, spring morning, and um, may you be well. Have a wonderful week. And please, yeah comment below maybe you found that when it you felt really challenged that something's awakened within you and you've gone oh yeah I know what he's talking about 
so um, please do comment below or um, ask any questions so many blessings